So um, what I'm going to quickly talk about <clears throat> is kind of creating um, a digital space to do the collaborative, low stakes um, kind of group work that is important to my class in a synchronized um, on Zoom type of situation. Um, I teach English. And so reading and writing and critical thinking are the skill sets I want my students to practice. We have the benefit where we could choose pretty much any content we like. So if we could situate the development of those skills in relevant um, thinking, problem solving activities and texts, that's great. Um, this is actually something I developed for my face-to-face -face classes, which sometimes is a little bit tricky given that in the English village, the Wi-Fi is less than stellar, um, <laughs> but th this will work in Zoom. Um, you can put students in groups, uh, randomize them. You can have groups, hopefully they have learning partnerships already in the class so they can work in their groups. Um, but essentially this is a post reading activity where they'll get a chance to collaboratively process um, the text, create things, do something with it, take the information and turn it into something new um, and support each other while they do that and hopefully have some fun. Um, so like if this was a face to face class, if we ever get back to those, they would go to this link here um, and then they their group, whether I do it by flippity or I just number them. Here's your group. They would have their own set of slides, which are easy to duplicate. It just takes some setting up ahead of time. You can also just drop this link into Zoom, which makes it even more efficient. So like they would open up their slides and they would find this. So I've set up um, a series of activities, different um, types of ways of looking at a text. This is a text that we look at in our uh, 21st century life and culture unit, which is called George Orwell Meet Mark Zuckerberg, which talks about data collection, targeted marketing, um, information bubbles and things like that. Um, so just they would have the period um, to work through some of these materials together. So the first thing I would ask them to do is just simple summary and work on practicing this key component of um, composition, you know, the art of summary, the art of quotation and things like that. Really kind of low stakes, collaborative again, but it does require that each of them are on the same page um, with what the text is actually saying or what part of the text they want to emphasize. Then I have a kind of creative um, project where they can use digital images to create a collage um, that would represent some idea from the text. So setting all these up ahead of time is the key, giving them the, the dynamic and, and durable space where they can do this work together. Um, the next thing I ask them to do is to update um, the claims that Andrews makes, basically that we're being, uh, we're liking our ways ourselves into smaller and smaller windows into the world. Um, and so they do a little bit of research and they update um, with a new article um, that either challenges or confirms her opinion. Um, just some vocab. Uh, so again, low stakes, but so they're thinking about active reading and things like that. I ask them to come up with a series of questions about the text that they might want to explore later, which could lead to papers and then practice MLA. So we have our high order stuff. We have our kind of rote memorization um, type, type of activity, but they're working on these things together. And while they are doing that, I'm typically, uh, when I do this face to face, this is the second part of a quiz. It's the collaborative part. The first part, um, they do on their own and I can grade that and deliver it to them in class and offer feedback. Um, but they also will produce work and I can um, view this work. I can enter their Zoom breakout group and kind of talk, check in, see how they're doing and I will do that. But I can also view kind of like Big Brother, uh, the work that they're doing in real time and offer some suggestions for uh, updating that. And they do invest in this work and they produce really cool stuff, um, which is a lot of fun. And I say it's durable because when we work in groups, a lot of times we have big pieces of white paper that get thrown away immediately um, or end up as a picture, one of like 10,000 pictures in my phone that I never go back to. Um, but this is work that they can constantly um, revisit, especially as they're working on higher order tasks, um, like writing a paper and things like that. Um, so this typically creates um, uh, a lot of uh, 
dynamic um, work and thinking and processing of the information and practicing, of course, of the skill sets. Um, so once they do that, I can evaluate, I can update this, the um, grade book and things like that. But what I think is also really helpful, this is my homepage, by the way, um, I do it in descending order. The most recent week, which I post that week, um, is always at the top. So like if we're only in week 13, this would be the first one that they see. But let me just go. So once they've done that work, you can showcase it in your slides. It's super easy to copy and paste from one slide deck to another. So this gives them a sense of agency, like they're helping to craft the course and shape the direction that the course goes. Again, we can all revisit these things. Um, it allows you to showcase the work they're doing, um, allows them to be leaders. So this would be the slide deck for um, overall, this is like a two or three week unit um, that they would go through different activities that I might do on a whiteboard in class or digitally, um, things like that. Let's see, let me go here. Um, here's one that they've contributed to in a variety of ways. I won't get into all the things they make memes. Um, but going back to this uh, slide deck, I am then able to showcase um, in class while we once we've kind of done this group work, we can come together as a large group discussion and we can talk about some of their ideas and having prepared together um, and supported each other doing this preparation work, this processing, they're much more apt to contribute to large class discussions and we can kind of um, bounce around their ideas. But again, showcasing their work, letting them have um, some uh, authority within the class I found is a really good way to um, get them to engage um, in a meaningful way. It's also a good way to kind of trick them uh, into, hey, now we're segueing into the next thing, our next assignment, and make it seem like they led it that way. And, and oftentimes they do. So here is the list of all the questions from this slide for that one class. So no matter what group um, students were in, and I tried to um, showcase of all the students, they would probably see work that they did in this slide at least. And then as the instructor, I can hone in. So I might ask them then um, to do a little bit more thinking about this, connecting um, reading with the writing process. But then I can hone in on an area that I would like us to, to pursue. So what is web lining and how does it work? How does this um, kind of connect to this idea of data collection and targeted marketing? Um, so then I'll transition that way into what we're going to look at next. This is a quote from the article that we read, but it's actually a quote within a quote of, from a book by Eli, Eli uh, Pariser called The Filter Bubble. I find that connecting imagery to the concepts is really helpful for students as well, especially um, very visual learners. And then I showcase what we call in English composition, the quotation sandwich, where you set up the quote and then you explain it. But then inevitably this will lead to a discussion about media bias and um, ultimately where we will head um, in their paper or their project, depending on. Um, so that's what I do with slides. And then real quickly, I know we already had Tasha's awesome perusal um, example, but I would, also like to showcase how you can do this in perusal as well. And I'll be as quick as I can with this. So if I can find it real quick. So essay prompt group annotations. This is something I would do in class synchronize on Zoom um, and it would count for the participation score. Now, the slides that I just showed you, if students aren't coming to the synchronized, I have no problem with that. Um, they can go, I can copy a, a slide deck and they can do that work on their own and get the exact same credit. It, as if they came to class. I found like about 10% of my students since we made the shift do take that option and they do just as well. Um, but there's an incentive because you're working together in a group in the live sessions. But anyways, I do that also for perusal. Once you get this set up, it'll take you directly to the assignment. So after doing all that work, that processing around Andrew's article, um, I have an essay and an essay prompt. Um, okay this. 
um, that I would like them or I need to know. And the, the earlier activity is very formative. I can see where, where they're getting, um, what they're getting, what they're not, what ideas they're having. Um, but with essay, larger writing assignments, I really need to make sure they understand the instructions. And when I do this in class, I pass out the piece of paper, I'm like, annotate it, talk about it. And then I go, okay, any questions, any ideas? And a lot of times they're like, no, we're cool. Um, it's all good. And I'm like, really? And the, yeah, but when I did it this way on perusal, I put the uh, prompt up there um, and, and had them, and students love perusal, um, annotate the prompt collectively in groups. Actually, I think I did it um, individually first and then they got in a group. Then we got into the large class discussion. Um, I was able to, in real time, um, answer their questions about the uh, the writing prompt to see where what they're getting, what they're not getting. Um, that sort of assessment allowed us, once we came to a large class discussion, to um, address some of these things and brainstorm some of their ideas that they're already having right off the bat there. Um, but again, this is durable. This, this is something that they can reference later on. Um, and I found that doing this produced the strongest papers that I um, had seen in this unit so far. So again, just trying to make digital space to do that collaborative um, team building, learning partnerships, uh, the productive struggle of grappling with concepts and processing it into something new, I found to be super helpful.